Loving yourself every moment all the time is not the secret to success. Having appreciation for yourself is different than constantly loving. Now in the Bible it says, love thy neighbor as thyself. So I think it's a worthy goal and it's useful, but most people are obsessed with it. And I think, get on about living a life that's meaningful and you'll love yourself. I think the more you find unconditional love for others, the easier it is to find in yourself. And I think the focus is serving and loving, and that's what will get you to the point where you start doing it. But if you want to speed it up, stack all the good you've done, you'll feel great about yourself. Because it's all about you, me, 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 what I'm not getting, what I'm not doing, and that's why you're in pain. And so don't, I'm not telling you like I haven't done this, but I've done it too in the past, but it's an old pattern I don't really do anymore. And I, it used to affect me. The, a dominant one, I wouldn't have become who i become. I know some people are not a good influence. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying you're more than somebody's influence unless you obsess about it every moment and make them wrong so you can make yourself feel superior morally, psychologically, or spiritually. That's bullshit. Stop the pattern. We've all done it. Catch yourself. Because if you want joy, happiness, and freedom in an extraordinary life, it will not come from blame. Never. There's no pride that comes from blame. I don't mean fake pride where you make shit up to feel good. I'm talking about real pride. Pride is something you earn. Like people tell me, oh, I have no self-esteem because my parents used to say this or they'd say that. I'd say that's such bullshit. I'm not saying it's bullshit they didn't say that. I said it's bullshit, that's why you don't have self-esteem. Self-esteem does not come from what people say about you. Mm. Self-esteem comes from what you experience about yourself. See, someone can tell you your whole life you're a piece of crap and a part of you go, you're full of it, I'm gonna show you. Lots of people have done that. They never bought it. Or someone tell you you're beautiful your whole life, you go, I'm not really beautiful. So what people tell you doesn't matter at all. It's what you stack. It's what you assemble. It's what you create. It's the habit of what you put in your head. And today I don't blame you because we got a whole culture that's always blaming somebody else for something in their life. But blame is not a strategy for pride. That's why you listen to these blaming people. They're all angry all the time. Your biography is not your destiny. And it doesn't matter what you've been through. What you decide now is what's gonna control your life. What you decide each day going forward is gonna decide your life. And I look at them seeing me, I can read their minds. This big, tall, white, rich guy is gonna tell me biography doesn't matter. So I said, you know, let me tell you my story. And I told them the whole story, way more than I'm telling you. And every one of them was crying their eyes up when they're done. I said, look where I am right now. Because I wouldn't assemble the story that my past equals my future. The past only equals your future if you live there. If you're using a rear view mirror to guide yourself, you're gonna crash. So what you've been through is horrific. What you've been through is unjust. I'm on your side. But if you hang on to it, you have no future and you have no one to blame but yourself. My mom would think I was lying and I wasn't lying. She poured liquid soap down my throat till I threw up and I wasn't lying. So it's not the physical abuse, it's the fact that this is the person you love most that's trying to hurt you that messes with your head. So I could have been messed up for life, but I didn't. There's something inside me says, I'm responsible for this life. And part of that is because I started reading when I was 13, 14 biographies of people, the greatest people in history and reading their lives and finding out, guess what? Their lives were far from perfect. Some of them had worse lives than I had. But when you have no reference and all you do is go online, you talk to other people, it's making everybody else toxic and I'm like this and they didn't do that. Then you get to have this shitty life just like those other people. Why are they online so much? Because they don't have a life, right? Don't be one of those. Free yourself from the chains of your past. Yes, there are people that you don't want to hang out with that will not serve you. But then move on. Don't sit there and talk about it constantly. Don't waste your time. And you say, but what if it's family, Tony? Mine was family too. And you learn to grow. You go, they're in my life. If someone can get your goat, if someone can piss you off, if someone can make you feel less than, that's God coming to you saying, grow. You need some spiritual growth. There's gotta be some change in your perception, your belief, your emotions, your spiritual look of life. So that can't happen anymore. But then life throws them at you too. When they come, you just go, okay, it's gonna have me until I grow. What needs a shift in me so that it no longer has an impact? It's like your growth is the only limit to your happiness. If you're not happy, you're not growing in some area. And usually it's a place where you're blaming, you're pointing the finger, I don't care if it's government, don't get me wrong. People can be unfair, unjust, that's for sure happens. But you can't control that. You can't make it not happen. 
What you have to do is become stronger than any of it so you're free. Freedom comes from growth. Freedom does not come from control. Because control is an illusion. You can't control everybody. No matter how hard you try, you can't control what they think or feel. And not everybody's going to be fair and just. And you, my dear friends, and I, have not always been fair and just. Whether we admit it or not, it's just the nature of being a being, a human being. But we can make the largest pattern fair and just and loving and powerful and serving and growing until it becomes the dominant thing inside you. And then you experience life as being great, not your great. Life's great because you're living a great path. Whichever thing you're most desirous of changing, whatever thing is giving you the most pain, I always teach physiology first, as you well know. If you change the body, you'll change the emotions. If you change the emotions, you'll change your decisions, you'll change the quality of your life. Because the quality of your life is your emotions. It's not what you get, you have a billion dollars and commit suicide, people have done it, right? You can have beautiful relationships and commit suicide. You can have people loving you and be sad all the time. Our pattern of emotion is our home and you have to upgrade your home. You have to train it and one way to train it is the emotion comes from the way you move, the way you breathe, the way you speak. And all those physical characteristics change your biochemistry towards this feeling of being depressed. Remember, fear is physical. You feel it in your throat or your gut. So it's courage. Courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It just means you're strong enough you push through in spite of the fear, right? And courage feels different in the body. So when you go lift or you go for a sprint or a strong run or you jump in that freezing water, when you push your mind to go beyond what's comfortable, you feel a strength inside you and that strength will help you to change your body, your emotions, your relationships, whatever. Like find somebody who has what you want, ideally maybe more than one person, two or three and figure out what are they doing different than you in their relationship? What do they believe different than you about relationship? If it's their body, what are they doing different? They're not lucky. They're doing things differently. You might be slightly biochemically different, but there's patterns there that you can see. And so instead of learning by trial and error, which can take decades you may never learn, Jim Rohn taught me success leaves clues, man. Find someone's got what you want, study what they do, every aspect of it, and then add yourself to it. Serving is what my purpose is. I don't need all this bullshit. And that means I can do it when I introduce, when I say hello to the mailman, I can do it in front of 50,000 people, I can do it with my child. And there's lots of different purposes as you go through your life. But most people are trying to get that, they haven't even figured out what the hell they're gonna do, they haven't even figured out how to enjoy their life. Your purpose will unfold if you do the right things. I think greatness is service. I think uh, great service is, is a great life. I think, um, you know, as you live your life, and I'm fortunate enough to, uncover this earlier in my life, not because I'm such a good person, I think just because I love people and because I then attracted really brilliant people 20, 30 years my senior who had been through all the patterns. In the end, it's not what you get that's going to make you happy, it's who you become and it's uh, who you've been able to touch and, um, you know, so I think greatness is service. I think greatness is finding the way to do more for others than anybody else. Uh, because that'll also come back to you in spades from the standpoint of your own sense of internal pride, not external, but your own sense like people could take away everything I have, they can't take away who I've become as a man by my service and uh, by my growth. So I think um, I think purpose and, and having a sense of progress are the two things that create a great life. If you've got a higher purpose than yourself, that's going to give you the motivation and the energy to drive when everybody else is exhausted and you're exhausted. And if you're making progress, you'll feel the rewards that come from that. And I think those two are twin powers in a great life.